Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video, it is sumo bot time. Hoo-ya! Hoo-ya! Oh wait, that's that's karate, right? Um, my robotics class, again, because of the whole pandemic and a possible shutdown, my attitude has been, hey, let's do everything we can. Make the most of every day, every moment. So I said, hey, we normally don't do sumo bots until October, but I said, come on, we gotta get these things rolling right now. So I have my students building sumo bots and competing. So if you want to see how our competition works, the rules, and how those robots look like, stay with me. He now Lego Robotics. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and go straight to it. Mr. Hino, what are the rules according to your sumo bot competition for your classes? So here we go. You can only use what's in your EV3 kit. We use the um, Lego Mindstorms EV3. They cannot use anything that that kit does not have. I do not let them use anything that's just, um, I mean, if they're using sensors that have a purpose, and I'll let you know which two they have to have, then they can use it. But, you know, and also you have a size limitation. So the robot cannot be bigger than an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So when I look down, I can put the robot on that paper. When I look down, Nothing should be hanging off except for cables. Cables are fine. And um, here's what happens if another team feels like another team's robot's too big. They can ask for a size check, but it has to be before those two um, teams meet in a competition. And what I will do is I'll look at the robot. I'll size check it if it's too big. They have to take some pieces off. If they also have illegal pieces, let's say that they have more than they're supposed to, then another team needs to call them out on it. But if they don't say anything, then everything's fair. So basically they have to call it out before the match if there's a piece, illegal piece infraction or if the robot's too big and if they wanna size check that. And then my classes normally will do best out of three. So a win is three points. A loss is zero points, and if there's a tie, that's one point. So they'll play possibly three matches. If a team wins the first two, it's over. But let's say that a team loses the first one, they win the next one, and then there's a tie. So both teams now have, you know, four points, and so I will let them play up to five matches to break that tie. If, the, if it's still a tie after five matches, then it will remain a tie. And so the, my, my classes have teams of two. And so they have, you know, endless possibilities. They can go on the internet, look up sumo bot ideas. They can use their robot educator and just modify it. My only rule is they have an ultrasonic sensor to be able to see the other robot. And they need a color sensor to be able to see the edge of the table to make sure the robot stays on that table. Other than that, they can do what they want, make it as heavy as they want, as long as it meets that size requirement. And so it's a really fun part of our year. The, the students just love to be able to see what everybody comes up with. Some people use their medium motor, some don't. Some of them gear up their sumo bots, some don't. So it's just real fun to be able to watch them enjoy you know, beating each other, but just competing, just having fun, especially after not being in class for an entire year. So what I wanna do now is let you guys get a sneak peek, a sneak peek at what this looks like in my class. What I do is after everybody has done their matches, I take the eight best records. This year we had each team have a record of 10. So they can be seven and three, five and five, one and nine, two, five, and four, no, two, five, and three. Uh, whatever combination adds up to 10, they stop. I take the best eight teams, and they basically do a win or lose competition to find out the champ. So let me go ahead and now show you the video that I took of my students battling each other in the 2021 Sumo Bot competition. Oh, 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 oh.
guys. So again, it's super fun. Um, those sumo tables, um, yes, I had to one year just size them out. My father-in-law helped me cut them out, paint them, and I've had them for you know five, six years. So they're very cool to store. When I need it, I pull it out. When I'm done, I put them away. And it's just real neat. My students always enjoy the sumo competition. I give them a questionnaire at the end of the year and 90% of my students tell me that the sumo bot was their favorite competition. So it's, you know, they learn about physics. They learn about, you know, strategy with their robots. They learn about all kinds of things about just being able to push and strategy and uh, strength, especially with those gearing up. So it's a really fun competition. Let me know down in the comments section if you guys compete in something like this and how does yours differ than ours? How does yours work? Do you know, do you like it? And it's a really cool project though. Okay guys, I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Lego Robotics. I'm out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay guys, take care.